Hi, and welcome to another video on uh, quarantine chemistry. This is a short explainer video on how to do bomb calorimetry math. You should have already watched a video on how bomb calorimeters work, uh, sort of their setup and how they function, but I want to get into a little bit how to solve the kinds of problems that you're going to encounter uh, in this course since we don't have any bomb calorimeters at school to use, and even if we did, we're all trapped in our houses now, and so we really can't uh, make use of them anyway. So the math of bomb calorimeters is actually quite similar to the math of coffee cup calorimeters. The functional equation looks like this, where this is a capital C, not a lowercase c, but that capital C is known as heat capacity, which you should have learned in the last section is actually equal to little c times little m anyway. So the bomb calorimeter, because it's made of many parts, not just one part, like uh, a styrofoam cup, has a lot of different parts. And if we add all of those parts, C and M values together, we get one large value that we label capital C. And that capital C will function as C of the bomb calorimeter in total, rather than having to worry about all the separate parts. So instead of Q equals C, M delta T, like a coffee cup calorimeter, we just have Q equals big C delta T. And that Q is still the Q of the bomb calorimeter. That's its heat change. So how much energy the bomb calorimeter absorbs. It should always be positive. Because the bomb calorimeter is always absorbing energy. That means that delta T, the change in temperature for the bomb calorimeter, is also always positive because the bomb calorimeter has something burning inside of it, so it's always getting warmer as a result of re receiving that heat. And so the delta T is positive, so the Q is positive, and that also makes C positive. So everything in this equation should be positive. The key thing probably to learn then to relate is that this means that Q of the bomb calorimeter equals the opposite of Q of the reaction. So whatever reaction we're talking about is gonna be producing energy. So the reaction itself is exothermic, so it has a negative change in temperature. So it has a negative change in joules or kilojoules. And so what's happening is it's releasing that energy, giving away that energy, and so the bomb calorimeter is absorbing it. So much like the example I used before where I gave you $10, the reaction is giving away $10, so technically it's at negative 10 kilojoules, let's say, and we'll make it negative so that the bomb calorimeter can be absorbing 10 kilojoules, so that negative, negative 10 kilojoules equals positive. It's just a way of making the math work out a little bit. So you'll note that there's only three components here, Q, C, and delta T. So in any problem, you're gonna be given two of those three things. One thing to note, and we'll talk about this a little bit when we solve the two problems, there are no grams, there's no place for grams anywhere in this formula. So you should not involve grams anywhere a bomb calorimeter formula. Oops. So you should not be using grams anywhere in here. You may need to use grams at the beginning or at the end, but you should not be using grams in the middle when you're using this equation. You may need grams to get the problem started. You may need grams to figure out something at the end, but no grams while using Q equals C delta T. All right, let's try out a sample problem. So this problem asks us when 1.5 grams of butane, C4H10, uh, is burned in a bomb calorimeter with heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter, that's the CBC, equal to 10.8 degrees, uh, kilojoules per degree Celsius, what is delta T? Essentially what that means is if uh, this bomb calorimeter warms up by one degree Celsius, that means it must have absorbed 10.8 kilojoules. If it warms up by two degrees Celsius, it must have absorbed two times 10.8 kilojoules, uh, so around 21.6 kilojoules. If you have any delta T, any change in temperature, you simply multiply it by this number and you'll get your overall energy change. So uh, the problem sets up fairly simply that Q of the BC equals C of the BC times delta T. And I think it's sometimes pretty helpful in these problems simply to locate what we have. I just told you in the last slide that we should not be using the grams yet. We'll need that at the end, but we certainly, or at the beginning, excuse me, but we don't need it in the middle. So do we have Q? No, we don't have that yet. Do we have C of the BC? Yes, that we do have. And we're looking for delta T. 
So if we're looking for delta t, we have c, b, c, there must be a way to find q of the b, c. And the way to find that is it has this fuel value written over here. That is, every gram of butane gives off 49.1 kilojoules. So if I burn 1.5 grams of butane, and each gram gives off 49.1 kilojoules, then I have 1.5 times 49.1 kilojoules, which is right around 73.65 kilojoules being released. That's what this negative symbol means. Remember, that's Q of my reaction. So Q of the bomb calorimeter is the opposite of that. Remember, it has to always be positive, positive 73.65. Kilojoules, so it's absorbing all the energy that the butane is giving off. So now we have our Q of the BC. 73.65 kilojoules equals 10.8 kilojoules per degree Celsius times delta T, which is the one thing we don't know. So delta T will simply equal 73.65 divided by 10.8, and that's around 6.82 degrees Celsius. So that's one of the types of problems you'll encounter with a bomb calorimeter. Fairly straightforward, just trying to find delta T, but having to use grams in advance. Again, the two problem types are generally that you have to use grams at the beginning or grams at the end, but never grams in the middle of using the Q equals C delta T formula. All right, let's look at one of the other ways that we could have one of these problems. So we've got a second problem here where we have ethanol. Ethanol uh, is something that whenever you go to the gas station, if you don't have an electric car, it'll tell you that ethanol has been added to the gasoline. It doesn't burn quite as well as gasoline, doesn't release quite as much energy as gasoline, but it is far more renewable than gasoline. We can derive it in all sorts of uh, simple, natural ways from plant matter and things like that. So uh, when 1.1 grams of ethanol are burned in the bomb calorimeter with the C of the BC equal to 10 points to the same bomb calorimeter as before, the temperature goes up by 3.03 .03 degrees Celsius. So what is ethanol's heat of reaction or its fuel value per gram and per mole? So again, we don't want to use grams in the beginning, excuse me, in the middle, we need to use it in either the beginning or the end. So we have our 1.1 grams here, we'll have to figure out whether we're gonna use this in the beginning or the end. Again, I find it rather helpful to simply look at the formula and see, do I have two of the three things at the beginning? In which case, if I do, I need to use the grams at the end. If I have only one of the three things in the beginning, I have to use grams at the beginning. So what do we have so far? Well, we don't have Q, but we do have C, that's right there, and we do have delta T, that's right here. So we've got two of the three things, so it does not appear as though we need to use grams at the beginning, and we won't. We use grams at the end. So Q of the bomb calorimeter will equal 10.8 kilojoules per degree Celsius times 3.03 .03 degrees Celsius, which is uh, about 32.7 kilojoules. So that's how much the bomb calorimeter absorbed. So Q of the reaction is the opposite of that negative 32.7 kilojoules. So it gave off 32.7 kilojoules. That, however, does not answer either question. The two questions we're being asked are to find it per gram of ethanol and per mole of ethanol. Well, that's not too difficult because we got 32.7 kilojoules out of 1.1 grams. So if we simply do this division, we'll find how much one gram will give off. So if we divide that, we get negative 29.7 kilojoules per gram. So there's one answer. And then if we want to convert that to kilojoules per mole, the lucky and easy thing to do is simply multiply by the molar mass, which was rather conveniently given to us earlier in the problem. So that's 46.07 grams per mole. And you'll notice the grams will divide out and we'll get our answer in terms of uh, kilojoules per mole, which in this case should be a rather large magnitude negative number. It's a large magnitude simply because we wouldn't use fuels like ethanol if they didn't produce a lot of energy per gram and per mole. Uh, if you contrast this with gasoline, gasoline gives off about 5,000 
uh, kilojoules per mole. So substantially more powerful, but again, much harder to make and renew. So ethanol, though not quite as powerful as gasoline, still uh, does produce energy and again, can be made uh, naturally. And so it's a far easier substance to renew than gasoline, even though it doesn't give off quite as much energy. All right, I hope these two example problems will help you solve some of your homework problems. If not, as always, reach out to your teacher.